today's message is who am I I watched a movie a long time ago by Jackie Chan uh, that had the same title who am I how many of you have seen that movie who am I <laughs> uh, it's quite interesting um, also for us spiritually we need to really realize who we are after we know who Jesus Christ is um, there are a few very important things that I really want to quickly summarize for us last week uh, the message was who is Jesus uh, and Jesus is the eternal word of God, is the light of life. Because Jesus is the eternal word of God, if you follow Jesus, uh, your life is guaranteed of everything uh, that is there for the spiritual blessings. Uh, if you follow religion, there's no guarantee of eternal spiritual blessings. But if you follow Jesus, you have the guarantee of the eternal spiritual blessings. If you follow religion, there is no guarantee of spiritual victory. You can't even overcome Satan. You cannot overcome sin. But when you follow Jesus, you have victory over Satan. You have freedom from sin and curses. And your life is completely guaranteed in Christ. That, that is the meaning of acceptance. And those who have received Jesus Christ in their hearts, they also need to enjoy Jesus who is the light of life. So all the kinds uh, of darkness that we see in the world, how can you live your life free from the forces of darkness? You need to receive Jesus Christ in your life. Um, have you understood those two points clearly? Uh, let me just do it again for the sake of uh, making you realize those two points. So the spiritual blessings, uh, the spiritual life of overcoming sin and sin and death. You need the word of God. That's why Jesus came as the true eternal word of God. Religion cannot overcome any of those things. Interestingly, if you follow religion, you fall even deeper into uh, curses and fall even deeper into disasters and calamities in your life. But because Jesus came as the eternal word of God, when you receive Jesus, your life is completely finished from those things. Uh, so when you accept Jesus, you are accepting the word of God in your life. And then this world is full of darkness. And Jesus came as the light that shines even in the darkness. So when you have Jesus, you have light in your in your heart. So you are the ones that have light in you. Wherever you go, all the darkness disappear. Because of you, now light has entered into your family line. 
Because of you, light has entered even in your nations. So the moment you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you have received very amazing blessings. Amen? You believe that? You have received the word of God. You have received the light of the world. That's why Jesus himself says, you are the light of the world. Do you know why we have all these many problems in the world today? Because mankind, Adam and Eve, they came out of the word of God in the beginning. That's why Jesus comes to us as the eternal word of God that cannot be erased by anything. So you, right now, what you have is that you have the eternal word of God in you. Even just with this, you must be very happy today. You have received the word of God. You have received the light. Amen? Amen. That's why we must be happy because of Jesus. Uh, why are we happy today? Uh, for many reasons we can be happy. I don't know why Jesus is smiling already, but he must be happy today for some reason. <laughs> Maybe because he's not translating today. <laughs> I guess what, that's one of the major reasons why he's happy. <laughs> but if you're happy because of the, those kind of things, next week you'll be sad again. <laughs> Uh, but that's how we live our lives many times. We live our lives finding happiness from the temporary things. Yeah, when you pass your exams, you're so happy. Uh, when you're healthy, you went to the hospital, but you're okay, you, you feel very happy. When you get a promotion or a new job, you feel very happy, isn't it? Then what happens when you get demoted? <laughs> Are you going to feel sad? Uh, through the book of John, I really hope that all of us will find the principal source of the eternal blessings and the happiness that is in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I really appreciate the translators because they're really doing so, they're working so hard because it's not easy to, to, to translate for me because I'm not really somebody who speaks a lot so I don't know where to stop, where to continue. They have to do it by themselves anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amen. Um, today, uh, if Jesus came and restored these wonderful blessings in our lives, then who in the world are we? Uh, if you know who you, who you are, you will uh, have new sets of priority, you will even have a new worldview in your life. But if you don't know who you are, you don't know what's really valuable. You have a really strange uh, worldview. So the first point here today is uh, one who is sent uh, from God. So you are people that are sent from God. Uh, the purpose of doing this message again in the English ministry is to apply to the foreigners, really. And to apply to the to the Korean ministers that are reaching out to the foreigners in the field. 
어, 현장을 향한 그리고 있는 우리 사역자들에게도 적용할 수 있도록 하는 것입니다. You are sent from God. You are sent by God Himself to come to Korea. That's what I believe. 그래서 하나님께로부터 부르심 받은 자들입니다. And here we see two points. So 여기도 두 가지 포인트가 나옵니다. Uh, it's mission field. Uh, mission field identity. And I, th I believe that in Korean is like Samyong Jok. So, uh, um, we are given a very special mission by God, and our identity itself is based on that mission. We are given two kinds of missions. So, two kinds of missions. Uh, one for the people of the world. And also we have a mission to Satan himself. Uh, that's the mission you have received. Uh, does it sound a little strange? Uh, you have a mission to the people of the world and you also have a mission to Satan himself. Um, why to the people of the world? Because the world is full of darkness. They are hopeless because they don't have the gospel. And they are blind. The light has come. They cannot see the light. Verse 6 in the book of John says, The true light came into the world, but they did not know him. So God has given us a mission to those people to go and tell them and make them see the light and realize the light that is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 verse 4 we see that Satan is trying to blind the people of the world. He is, in other words, he's putting blinders on their eyes so that they will not see the glory of, uh, of the light of Christ himself. Especially when you're receiving the message, the word of God, Satan does this role a lot. Uh, have you seen maybe in um, on the stage when you're watching a musical and suddenly they need to like change something, you know, like uh, maybe change the, you know, the, uh, their dresses or something. Sometimes they bring this big curtain and then you know, the actresses, they change really quickly and then they remove the curtain and then they start acting again. Maybe you've seen that. Even last time we had the missions festival, the team from the Philippines, they tricked us with somebody like, you know, lying on the, and they put a blanket on him and they did something crazy and then we were like, wow, and then they removed the blanket, we were like, wow. <laughs> Satan does the same thing. When the pastor is on the pulpit preaching the word of God, he brings a curtain and put on the pastor. Or sometimes he put the blanket on you. And you cannot really hear the word of God. You can't see the light of Christ through the word of God. So that's why we have a mission to bind the forces of darkness and to bind Satan. Uh, those who have received this mission, they need to do it with passion. And who have received this mission? Uh, all the children of God. 
Uh, this mission is not given specifically to some special people. Anyone that believes uh, in Jesus Christ and become a child of God, all of us we have received this mission. And if your basic uh, is the basic of your life is this mission, uh, which is the gospel, then God will use you as the main figure of change. Uh, right now, personally, I pray for a lot of changes in the English ministry as well. Uh, what kind of a change? It's not like changing anything and maybe changing the time for worship or anything, but some sort of like spiritual revive, revival and spiritual movement to arise in the English ministry. Right now, there are many foreigners that are coming out that are really rooting down deeply into the word. And there are many foreigners that are really holding to uh, correct covenantal prayer topics and they are praying sincerely before God. And also, the many foreigners are receiving answers in evangelism. Do you know how God works through one person? Of course, all of us receiving these answers and going together is a, is a great thing, but God usually just does in a very dramatic way. Through one person, God just allows everyone to see the works of God. So I believe in the fields, uh, through the disciples, the foreign disciples, this great work of evangelism is going to take place and those people will become the main figures for the change that God has given us. Right now, I've already started to see this, you know, uh, in, uh, in Kenya we have this saying that says, where you see a smoke, there must be fire as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where well, there's smoke, there's fire. So, Kenya, so Iran, Kujiman, and Mangan is made up. Yongi, Nungose, Puri, and Yongi, yeah, smoke and fire, right? Yeah, uh, let me explain. You know, um, if we see smoke behind here, so Yongi, Yongi, and as we're worshiping, you see a little smoke is coming out. We will be very concerned. Because you know that there must be fire there. Even if you don't see the fire, you see the smoke, you know there's fire. Uh, right now, I see uh, people who are really applying the three, three things, word, prayer, and evangelism. I can see here and there slowly by slowly. And I can really tell that God is working already in us. Uh, so may you believe that you have received a mission. And that mission is that God has sent you so that you can proclaim the gospel and save very many people that are in the field. Uh, amen. And then the second point is you are the witness of Christ. Uh, God has called you and given you the identity of an evangelist. Uh, this is what you need to restore today through this message. Um, you are an evangelist. Uh, you are a missionary. That's why you're here today. Uh, why is this so important? Because the gospel is the only answer to life. <laughs> 
We have received the gospel and people in the field need the gospel. That's why God has given you uh, his mandate in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 verse 18, 17 to 19. And they said, you are the ambassadors for Christ. You have received a ministry of reconciliation. And then what now you need is just you need to restore a field. Uh, I really hope that all of us, one by one, will restore evangelism field. Yesterday, we went to Gimpo to do Darapang, and on the way back, picking the angel from her, her school, I was surprised to see how wonderful evangelism field God has placed her inside. Uh, someone who has a field, they receive a lot of grace. And if you have time, uh, also come to Yangchon and see the field of Brother uh, Rodel and many other fields that are here. Because someone with a field has no choice but to really become a witness of the light of Christ. I really hope that all of us will restore evangelism field. Because God has called you as a witness of this light, which is Christ himself. Of course, many people say that, oh, pastor, I don't know what to say when I go to the field. God promised that he will give you another counselor, the spirit of truth, who will teach you everything to say everything uh, at that right time when it's needed. The key to all this is in the conclusion. Life for the Lord. You need to have a life that is only for Jesus. A life for the Lord Jesus has no choice but to restore this mission field identity. And God has called you as the main figure uh, for the works that are established. I really hope that through this week's pulpit message, you will confirm slowly by slowly the answers that God has given you. Uh, amen. Let's take a time to pray with this message. Uh, we have two prayer topics, and also the third one is for the intercessory uh, prayers. Uh, we'll have the prayer topics. Uh, we'll just pray uh, straight without saying in the song. I just want us to close our, uh, our eyes and really hold on to the gospel and begin to, to, to pray with these two prayer topics. And to apply to the Sayokcha, to the Korean ministers that are reaching out to the foreigners in the field. You are sent from God. You are sent by God Himself to come to Korea. That's what I believe. And here we see two points. Uh, it's mission field. Uh, mission field identity. And I, th I believe that in Korean is like Samyong Jok. So, um, we are given a very special mission by God, and our identity itself is based on that mission. <laughs> 
그래서 우리는 하나님께로부터 아주 특별한 사명을 받았고 그리고 우리 우리의 정체성이 바로 이거와 연결됩니다. We are given two kinds of missions. 그래서 두 가지 사명을 받았습니다. Uh, one for the people of the world. 하나님께 세상 사람들에게. And also we have a mission to Satan himself. Uh, that's the mission you have received. Uh, does it sound a little strange? Uh, you have a mission to the people of the world and you also have a mission to Satan himself. Um, why to the people of the world? Because the world is full of darkness. They are hopeless because they don't have the gospel. And they are blind. The light has come. They cannot see the light. Verse 6 in the book of John says, The true light came into the world, but they did not know him. So, uh, so God has given us a mission to those people to go and tell them and make them see the light and realize the light that is Jesus Christ himself. Uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 4, we see that Satan is trying to blind the people of the world. He is, in other words, he's putting blinders on their eyes so that they will not see the glory of, uh, of the light of Christ himself. Especially when you're receiving the message, the word of God, Satan does this role a lot. Uh, have you seen maybe in um, on the stage when you're watching a musical, and suddenly they need to like change something, you know, like uh, maybe change the, you know uh, their dresses or something. Sometimes they bring this big curtain and then. You know, the actresses, they change really quickly and then they remove the curtain and then they start acting again. Maybe you've seen that. Even last time we had the missions festival, the team from the Philippines, they tricked us with somebody like, you know, lying on the, and they put a blanket on him and they did something crazy and then we were like, wow, and then they removed the blanket and like, wow. <laughs> Satan does the same thing. When the pastor is on the pulpit preaching the word of God, he brings a curtain and put on the pastor. Or sometimes he put the blanket on you. And you cannot really hear the word of God. You can't see the light of Christ through the word of God. So that's why we have a mission to bind the forces of darkness and to bind Satan. Uh, those who have received this mission, they need to do it with passion. And who have received this mission? Uh, all the children of God. Uh, this mission is not given specifically to some special people. Anyone that believes uh, in Jesus Christ and became a child of God, all of us, we have received this mission. And if your basic uh, is the basic of your life is this mission, uh, which is the gospel, then God will use you as the main figure of change. Uh, right now, personally, I pray for a lot of changes in the English ministry as well. Uh, what kind of a change? 
It's not like changing anything and maybe changing the time for worship or anything, but some sort of like spiritual revive, revival and spiritual movement to arise in the English ministry. Right now, there are many foreigners that are coming out that are really rooting down deeply into the word. And there are many foreigners that are really holding to uh, correct covenantal prayer topics and they are praying sincerely before God. And also, the many foreigners are receiving answers in evangelism. Do you know how God works through one person? Of course, all of us receiving these answers and going together is a, is a great thing, but God usually just does in a very dramatic way. Through one person, God just allows everyone to see the works of God. So I believe in the fields, uh, through the disciples, the foreign disciples, this great work of evangelism is going to take place and those people will become the main figures for the change that God has given us. Right now, I've already started to see this, you know, uh, in... Uh, in Kenya, we have this saying that says, where you see a smoke, there must be fire as well. <laughs> yeah. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm. Yeah, smoke and fire, right, yeah. Uh, let me explain. You know, um, if we see smoke behind here, and as we are worshipping, see a little smoke is coming out. We will be very concerned. Because you know that there must be fire there. Even if you don't see the fire, you see the smoke, you know there is fire. Uh, right now, I see uh, people who are really applying the three, three things, word, prayer, and evangelism. I can see here and there slowly by slowly. And I can really tell that God is working already in us. Uh, so may you believe that you have received a mission. And that mission is that God has sent you so that you can proclaim the gospel and save very many people that are in the field. Uh, amen. And then the second point is you are the witness of Christ. Uh, God has called you and given you the identity of an evangelist. Uh, this is what you need to restore today through this message. Um, you are an evangelist. Uh, you are a missionary. That's why you're here today. Uh, why is this so important? Because the gospel is the only answer to life. We have received the gospel and people in the field need the gospel. That's why God has given you uh, his mandate in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 verse 18, 17 to 19. And they said, you are the ambassadors for Christ. You have received a ministry of reconciliation. And then what now you need is just you need to restore a field. 
Uh, I really hope that all of us, one by one, will restore evangelism field. Yesterday, we went to Gimpo to do Darapang, and on the way back, picking an angel from uh, her school, I was surprised to see how wonderful evangelism field God has placed her inside. Uh, someone who has a field, they receive a lot of grace. And if you have time, I also come to Yangchon and see the field of Brother uh, Rodel and many other fields that are here. Because someone with a field has no choice but to really become a witness of the light of Christ. I really hope that all of us will restore evangelism field. Because God has called you as a witness of this light, which is Christ himself. Of course, many people say that, oh, pastor, I don't know what to say when I go to the field. God promised that he will give you another counselor, the spirit of truth, who will teach you everything to say, everything uh, at that right time when it's needed. The key to all this is in the conclusion. Life for the Lord. You need to have a life that is only for Jesus. A life for the Lord Jesus has no choice but to restore this mission field identity. And God has called you as a main figure uh, for the works that are established. I really hope that through this week's pulpit message, you will confirm slowly by slowly the answers that God has given you. Uh, amen. Let's take a time to pray with this message. Uh, we have two prayer topics, and also the third one is for the inter intercessory uh, prayers. Uh, we'll have the prayer topics. Uh, we'll just pray uh, straight without singing the song. I just want us to close our, uh, our eyes and really hold on to the gospel and begin to, to, to pray with these two prayer topics. Mm -hmm.